Okay, in the uh, second part of section 13.2 on the principle of operation, we're going to uh, look at a very good example and, and we're going to uh, try to uh, incorporate both Faraday's law and the uh, Lorenz force concept into our explanation on how this three phase induction motor works. Okay, so what we have here in uh, figure 13.5a is we, we have a um, conducting bar. Okay, and now, you know, this, this bar, you know, and all parts of it is totally conductive. I mean, think of it as being copper. And, and so, you know, it's all connected together and the, the entire thing is, is conductive. So what we're gonna do in this idea is we're going to take a permanent magnet here and you can see that it is oriented with the North Pole here. And this is supposed to represent the uh, flux that uh, comes from the uh, north pole of the magnet. And what we're going to do, we're going to place this magnet just above this conducting ladder. And we're going to move it very fast, very fast. We're going to move it to the right. Okay. And so when it does that, it's going to move at a speed we're going to call V. And its magnetic field, which we indicate with um, the representation for flux density with um, that symbol, it's gonna sweep across the conductors. And when it does, several things are going to take place, okay? Now, the things that take place when that occurs is um, first off, this, this voltage that's based on this equation that we talked about earlier, okay? What we're going to see is a, a, a voltage is induced in each conductor when it is cut by the flux based on that equation, okay? So here's, here's these, and, and a voltage is induced in each one of those. This induced voltage that uh, occurs uh, produces a current to flow, right? That makes sense. And it flows down the conductor underneath the pole face through the end bars and back through the other conductors, right? Because they're all interconnected across there, okay? So that voltage that is developed based on this is causing current to flow, right? And we can see, you know, he's even showing us, uh, you know, some of the particulars of that. He's showing the, you know, here's, this would be half the current, here's half the current, you know, and, and so this is, this is showing again the movement across there and as we go, all right? So the third thing that happens, because this current carrying conductor is in a magnetic field, it produces its own magnetic field. Now, when that happens, these Lorentz forces come into play, and there's an interaction between the two. Now, what happens, what happens is if, if this conducting ladder here is free to move, these forces interacting will cause the conductor conductor to be drug along in the direction of the magnetic field across there, okay? So, so can you imagine that? You know, I'm moving this rapidly across this. I'm inducing a voltage. I cause current to flow. Current causes a magnetic field in the conductors. The magnetic field in the conductor uh, interacts with the magnetic field of the uh, magnet, and this Lorentz force are in, in effect, and, and based on the you know, the movement of this, we would actually be able to drag that ladder along with us. Now, what happens as, as it picks up speed, these conductors will be cut less rapidly by the moving magnet. And the result is that the induced voltage and the current will diminish. 
Now, think this is a relative speed, okay? It's relative to how fast the, the magnet is moving, okay? So when this thing is sitting still, you know, the, it, you know that relative speed of, of cutting across that conductor is at its highest. But when it starts to move along with the magnet, that relative speed decreases, okay? But, but in it, anyway, initially we see that, you know, that it's, that it's gonna be its largest, but then it, it tends to decrease as, as you know, the, this, is, this is in motion as well. Now, he says, you know, when, when the uh, ladder starts to move, you know, the forces acting on the conductor will decrease. And if the ladder were to move at the same speed as the magnetic field, the induced voltage and the current and the force dragging the uh, ladder would all become zero at that point, okay? So there has to be a difference between the speed of the magnetic field and the, you know, the speed of the ladder. If they're moving together at the same speed, then that conductor is not being cut by the magnetic field. And there has to be that for this to work, okay? So I'm gonna say that one more time. If this ladder were moving at the same speed as the magnet, then these conductors are not being cut by the magnetic flux. And when that occurs, that part of this equation becomes zero, okay? Because the relative speed is, is, you know, it's moving together. And then at that point, none of this works anymore. So that, that is a requirement for this. And this will carry on over into our idea of, a, of an induction motor. And what we could do, you now let's make this a motor. You know, you're like, well, no, this is impractical. Nobody, um, you know, that this isn't a motor. This is a, this is a conducting ladder. You know, what, what does that got to do with a motor? Okay, well, let's take this, this ladder and let's, let's bend it around in a manner and let's make this circular so it looks like this. Can you imagine being able to do that, right? You know, we just brought this in and we formed what we call the squirrel cage, okay? This is where the term squirrel cage actually comes from, right? It looks like a squirrel cage. And, and so that whole idea that, that we just talked about is the way that a squirrel cage induction motor works. And what happens is we place this cage inside of something and that something is a stator okay and, and so internal in the stator internal in the stator is this rotating magnetic field that we create with the electricity that we supply to the stator okay and as this magnetic field rotates it actually drags the rotor along with it as it rotates because the magnetic field induces voltages in the bars. Those voltages cause current to flow. That current has its own, you know, conductor, when the current flows has its own magnetic field, interacts with the magnetic field of the stator and that effect of being drug along occurs. That's how an induction motor works and you'd be surprised there's a lot of people that work with uh, electrical machines, electrical motors, and they don't really get that. They don't really understand that part of um, how an uh, induction motor works. But that's the fundamentals. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do next, is we're going to we're going to uh, attach these three phases of electricity to the stator. We're going to see how they uh, vary and how they produce this rotating magnetic field it causes this rotor to turn, okay? And then, of course, on the rotor, right, we're gonna have those, those stacked plates across there, those laminated plates are stacked across there. We're gonna put a motor shaft on here, right? We can couple a, 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 you know, a pulley to this, this thing, and we can uh, cause it to uh, do something. 
to do some type of useful work. All right, so that's gonna wrap up section uh, six, I mean, excuse me, 13 two.